Please. It's five o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Review. Craig and Ryland's Magic Review. Episode seven. We're seven episodes in. I think we're doing a good job here. Yeah, well, uh, I don't care if it's number seven because I'm seven. You are seven, exactly. And notice he's decided to dress just like me today. Uh, <laughs> this is my style and you know it. Um, guys, um, we've got five um, products to review. Some good, some not so good. And we're going to get straight into it. And you're going to uh, perform the first trick, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, so why don't you perform it first of all, and then we'll talk about the trick. Yeah. You're going to perform it? Yeah. Go for it, Brian. Daddy? Tell them, not me. I've got a prediction here. Yeah. Prediction. I want you to hold on to that. Okay. And I've also got a book. Read the book, Daddy. Top 50 superheroes. Yeah, so we've got like 50 random superheroes in here. Well, you like superheroes, don't you? Yeah, like we've got... We've got the Wasp. We've got... Storm, Storm. from the X-Men. I love Storm. We've got... The Human Torch and the Fantastic Four. We've got... Phoenix. Phoenix. She turned into a bad guy. What? Yeah, she turned... It doesn't matter, but she turned into a bad guy. Dark Phoenix. We've got Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get the point. There's loads We've of them. We've got Loki. We've got oh. Captain. We've okay, got get on with Captain it. Jesus. Okay, yes. Right, now, <laughs> what I want you to do is I just want you to lift up like that. Okay. And you're just going to land on just a random superhero. Yeah? yeah. Anywhere? Don't yeah. look. Shall I show the camera? Yeah. Don't look. Okay. I got it. You got it? Yeah, I've got it. Right, now, I'm going to show you the difference between mind reading and magic. The difference between mind reading and magic. Tell them, not me. Okay? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, right. So, um, right, the superhero you're thinking of is, um, he is, where's back? He does wear black, yes. Uh, he's strong. We, we, yeah, but the, a lot of superheroes wear black, and most of them are strong. Uh, he has a mask. Again, most superheroes wear a mask, right? But yes, he, he, he wears black, he wears a mask, and he's strong, yes. Uh, he likes bats. <laughs> yes, he does like bats. Batman. I was thinking of Batman, yes indeed, I was thinking of Batman. That was very now, good. do you remember I said I had a prediction? Yes, I do remember you said you had a prediction. Yeah, so I open it? Yeah, you open it. Okay, this I've is got your... I've my favourite comic in here. You've got your favourite comic in here? Yeah, I'm going to read it after this. You're going to read it after this? And then I'm going to play Zelda. <laughs> and then you're going to play Zelda. His comic is Batman. He did indeed know that I would pick Batman. That's really cool. But you said you were going to show me the difference between mind reading and yeah, magic. Yeah, that was just mind reading. That was mind reading, okay. Yeah, this is the magic. Just watch my orange t-shirt. Watch your orange t-shirt? Yeah, watch my orange t-shirt. Okay. Count the three. I'm gonna make it change. Are you? Okay. Okay. One, two, and three. Ta da! Whoa! It is indeed Batman. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool, dude. I love that. Now, Batman. Batman. Now, Ryan's put a lot of thought into this. And the reason Ryland's put a lot of thought into this is because when we saw the re when we saw the uh, the trailer for this, you knew straight away that you wanted this trick to be the opener in your show, didn't you? Yeah. You were like, "Oh my gosh!" Because we've been looking for a way to incorporate dress code into Ryland's act for a long time, and uh, and, and this was the perfect way of doing it. So, in all honesty, um, although you know, let's just talk about this for a minute. It's only like a 10 minute download. It only has to be a 10 minute download because in terms of the instructions, because it's very simple. It's, it's a force book. It works a little bit like the coloring book. You know, you can show lots of different superheroes. It's beautiful quality, isn't it? You would, you would swear that this is like a book on, on superheroes. It's amazing quality. It looks great, but obviously when they pick one, then they're going to get Batman. Now, there's two different versions of this. I never told you that, but there's two different versions of this. You can buy one that makes uh, that forces Batman, or you can buy one that forces the Hulk. Those are the two options. Uh, I went for Batman because I figured that there's going to be a lot more T-shirts that are readily available um, with Batman on than, than the Hulk. So that's why that's why we went for Batman. They're not really going to be a Hulk comic. Either. No, you kind of have him as part of the Avengers, don't you? Yeah. Uh, in terms of T-shirts. So tell me, what do you think of the trick? Uh, I'll give it, um, uh, I like it. 
You like it. You love it. Yeah, you, love it. <laughs> you got you got the dress code thing going on. Now you can use this however you want to. You don't have to do it how Ryland did it. Ryland's done it like this, so he's kind of got like first of all the mind reading, then he's got the prediction, then he's got the uh, the quick change. Which, by the way, if you don't know that, that's Kayla Morelli's dress code. We're not going to review that now, but it's an amazing product. Kayla Morelli's dress code. How good is dress code? Awesome. But you do need to do some sewing or have a mommy that can do some sewing in order to make it up for yeah, you. Yeah, my mum sewed. Yeah, she made your dress code up for you and she did a great job, didn't she? Yeah. Um, but Ryland's put dress code with it. But I mean, the, the idea is if you have in mind, if you need to force a superhero, then this is the actually probably the best way to force a superhero. But a couple of things to bear in mind. This isn't th something you want to carry around with you. This isn't a close-up item. You're not going to carry this around with you. This is more for stage or parlor or cabaret or something like that, isn't it really? But if you, let's see, do Lolly Hero by... Um, um, it, Oh my gosh, I can't remember who did Lolly. I, I know it is a mate. Oh my gosh. Um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Uh, but if you do Lolly Hero or anything where you need to force a superhero, this is great. But make sure that it fits your character. It fits Ryland because you're a seven year old boy and you're super into superheroes, aren't you? Yeah. But what would you give this out of 100? I know that you love it, but so I'm, I can guess what you're going to yeah. give it. Get, you're going to give it 100, aren't you? Yep, yeah. yeah. Like I said, very black and white. It's either 100 or 0 with this kid. Um, you know what? I, there's, there's, there's books, there's forcing books that force things that are um, more elaborate than this, that do a lot more than this. This literally just forces Batman. If you need to force a superhero and you haven't got a problem carrying this around with you, this is great. If you're a kid's entertainer and you need to force a superhero, this is amazing. If you're a stage performer and you need to force a superhero, this is amazing. Um, but it's very much a one-trick pony. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think the quality is amazing. I'll give it like 85%. Obviously, you're going to give it 100%. You said to me, this is going to be your new opener in your act now, isn't it? Yeah. This is, I mean, and it's great. You know, he had an idea for the trick. We bought it and it absolutely makes sense. So, um, yeah, if you've got an idea for it, Buy it. It's great quality. What you see is what you get. I really like it. And good performance, Rye. Well done. Okay, on to review number two. I'm going to perform this first of all, and then we'll talk about it. Rye, I've got a deck of playing cards. Last week you used... Um, uh, last week you used... Um, uh, dark side Star Wars cards. This week I'm using light side. Do you know why? Oh. Because I'm good and you're evil and naughty. No, I'm good. No, you're not. Yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Right, uh, very quick trick. Do me a favour, take a card... Any card? That, that one there? Yeah. Cool. Uh, take the card, show everyone, don't show me. Oh. Don't show me, do not show me. Do not show me. Hold it to your chest so I can't see it. Concentrate, look at me, look at me. Your card's a black card, isn't it? Yeah. Your card's a, uh, a club, isn't it? Yeah. Your card's a five of clubs. Yeah. Boom, that's the trick. Um, yeah. That's the trick. So what we're looking at here isn't necessarily the trick. This is an application of the prop. What we are looking at is the stack watch by Illusionist and Pete Turner. And what this is, the trick I just did was Mnemonica, wasn't it? Yeah. What I just did is, this is set up in Mnemonica, which is a memorized deck. And what I did is I had someone pick a card, they look at the card, uh, I look at the bottom card, so I see that, which is 21. Um, and so I know that's 22, which is the eight of spades. Now, that's, that's, that's standard Mnemonica. Now, what this watch allows you to do Around the outside of the watch, and I'm going to tell you how this works because illusionists are very open about this on their, their sites. Around the outside of this watch, there's a bevel. And the bevel has printed on it all 52 playing cards in order in mnemonica. So you can look at the watch and I Wait, can... is that how you did it? Yeah, so when you showed you the card... Yeah, exactly. When, I sh when you showed the card to the camera, I can look at the watch. I say I'm not looking and I can look at what the bottom card is and I can see what the next card is. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a way of doing the moniker but without even knowing, needing to know. Naughty man. Hang on, hang on. No, what do you think of this? Don't, 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 don't be silly with the whole naughty man thing. What do you think of this? Uh, what do you think? What's the point in it? <laughs> what? What's the point in it? <laughs> what do you mean, what's the point in it? Yeah, I don't need it. Hang on, no, what the point of it is, is, and I should tell you, I don't need to tell you this because you know about mnemonica. Um, if, for example, somebody said 20, I could look at the watch and I could go to number yeah, 20 but, yeah, and I but, could tell them it's the jacket. Yeah, but I don't need that. I already know what's after 20. I don't need it. I don't need no. the mnemonica. No, okay, so if I said 30, I could look at 30 and I'd know what card is at 30. Yeah, it's a five of clubs. I don't need to look at the watch. 
If I if I if if I, if I said forty, I can look at the watch. It's four spades. The other thing that this allows you to do is if you look at the bottom card of the deck. Yeah, uh, the two of diamonds. The next one's a jack of hearts. You could, but you could look it up on the watch. Yeah, and, I don't need to. But if I looked at the bottom card and saw the eight of diamonds. Yeah, I know the next one. The next one is the five of clubs. My card. But. Yeah, it's the seven of hearts. I know it's the seven of hearts. By the way, just so you know, we haven't even discussed this beforehand. <laughs> but, but 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 there's people out there, right? Okay, that don't that they've tried. They need to learn it. No, no, hang on. There's people out there that 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 have tried to learn the Monica, and they've not been able to. They've tried and they've failed. Um, they need and more the... practice. But this watch allows you to do mnemonica without practice. <laughs> What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> but you you don't. This, if you, you're winding me up now. If you, you know, there's, if you don't know what, if you can't learn mnemonica, then this will allow you to you do need it. You need to do more practice. What? If you forget, or you're trying to learn it, you need to do more practice and then you'll do it. So your solution to this is you don't need the watch because you can just do no, it. No, I don't need the watch. You can just do it without the watch. Yeah, I can do it without the watch. You, you don't need the watch either. I don't need the watch because I know a mnemonic, but the people out there that might need the watch. No. What about, okay, but let's say you're learning mnemonic and you're struggling and you can't remember it very, yeah, very well. More. <laughs> but there is something else, okay, D but the download that comes with this, Pete Turner has some amazing advice. He has some really interesting points on any card at any number and he talks through some really interesting psychological yeah, but I forces. Don't need it. He also will, he, what's really good is he talks about how you can take a shuffle deck and he gives a routine that you can use to get the deck into mnemonic order quite organically. But I mean, what you're paying your £100 for, I think it's about £100, £50, £100, something like that. What you... What? Yeah. What? Give me a deal. If you, you sell the watch for £100, give me the £100 so I can do Lego. That a deal. <laughs> You don't need the watch. Send it to a magician that tried to learn the money. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't rehearsed this at all. Is that genuine? Like I showed you this like five minutes before the show started, and we didn't talk about it. Do you really think that there's no point in it? No, there's no point in it. So send it to a magician that, that, that's trying to learn the money, but he's failing every time. Yeah. But, but you already have one, so already both all medicine can do it. Get the hundred, sell it for a hundred pounds. When when you got the hundred pounds, pass it to me so I can buy Lego and then the Switch game. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's the yes, he has got a point. Okay, he has got a, a point. If you already knew mnemonica, there is really very little point in this. But one thing it allows you to do is if you look at the bottom card of the deck. You can you can you can turn the bevel so that the bottom card of the deck is pointing to twelve, and it'll tell you where their selection is in the deck. So you know there are there is there is a couple of advantages. It'd be very difficult mental arithmetic to try and work that out. That'd be a, a difficult thing to work out. But I do get what your point your point your point is. There's there's not really any point in it. I should point out that there is a lot of information on the download. Pete Turner is an excellent teacher. Um, and he puts forward some amazing ideas with psychological forces, stuff he wouldn't be interested in, really interesting routines, stuff he probably wouldn't be interested in, um, and he's an amazing teacher, and his customer service is great, because when I bought the watch, I was struggling with it, and he did a custom video through Facebook Messenger to me to explain something that I didn't realise, which was really good. Um, I'm not using it, although, and the reason I'm not is, and this is something that illusionists don't talk about, your eyes have to be really good to see this. My eyes are terrible. I can't use a marked deck unless it's Steve Della's night flight deck. So I can't use a marked deck. And, and my eyes are too terrible. Like, can you see what's at 15 there? 15, where is it? Exactly. It's kind of there on the 15 on the, on the watch. Can you see it? Like, you know what 15 is. 15 is... The... Uh, 15 is a six of spades. Yeah, exactly. But I'm, where is it? It's meant to be there. Like, look, there's the Queen of Hearts. There's the... Three of diamonds, queen of clubs, there's the eight of hearts, and there's the six of spades there at number 15. But it's kind of hard to read, isn't it? Mm. Um, I've seen people moan about this on the internet and say, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's very convoluted because you have to look at your watch. Peter's thought that out brilliantly. Uh, and when you look at the watch, it's perfectly natural and motivated. That's not my issue with it. My issue with it is I don't need it. 
um, because I can't read the bevels. Oh, you don't need it. I don't need it. I can't read the bevels. But you know well, what? You I get... might use it if I could read it because I like the idea of telling the watch what card is at the bottom and then looking for their card and, and knowing where in the deck it was because that would make a really good any card at any number. But I can't do that because I can't read the watch very well. And if your eyes are bad, you might struggle. Um, he's got a point, though. If you, if you want to learn mnemonica, if you're buying this watch because you want to do mnemonica without learning mnemonica, I think his advice is the best, which is uh, practice, uh, practice the moniker yeah. is what you said. Practice the moniker. What are you going to give it? Uh, I'll give it 50. You're giving something less than 100%. 50%. I'm going to give it 80. I think it's, I think it's, look, there's a place for it. I'm not going to use it. If there's somebody out there, there are people, when you get older, Ryland, it's difficult to remember certain things. You lose your memory. How many times do I lose something around the house? How many times does mommy forget something? Uh, she forgot, like, when she want, when she tries to say, because earlier she, she said to Thea, uh, mm -hmm. put the milk in the bin, and she meant to say, put the milk in the fridge. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she forgets things and she says the wrong thing. It's because mommy's getting older. Mommy's getting older. So that happens, you know? Um, <laughs> you're in so much trouble, look at her face. <laughs> When people get older, they struggle to remember something sometimes. Look, there's a place for it. I'm not going to use it. He's not going to use it, are you? I don't need it. You don't need it. I don't need it. Um, but, it, it, you know, it's, it's a very good quality watch. It's a nice watch. I might just wear it as a watch, to be honest. It's a really nice watch. Um, but I, I'm just never going to use it. you need to sell it to give me £100. I might not. I might not. Because Keep you the watch owe me because... 90 already. I know I do. We're not going to get into just this now. You. Right, guys. <laughs> it's, it's a good prop. I just don't think he's right. Practice the Memdeck more, but it's a good quality product. 80, 50. <laughs> right, review number three. This is going to be a quick one. I'm going to perform it first of all, then we're going to talk about it. It's a packet trick. If you like packet tricks, you might like this. Uh, can you get the camera a bit closer, please, for me? Sarah, that would be amazing. Um, have a look at this. This is a trick with um, uh, a, a small packet of cards. And there's a story behind this. Um, and the story is about a gambler. Um, I, you don't play cards, do you, right? But when you play cards, normally, especially a game like poker, you're given a hand of cards, and there's normally five cards in the hand. This is not a great hand. This is a pretty bad hand in poker. And I want to tell you a story about a gambler who was once playing a high-stakes game of cards, and he was given this hand. And he just knew, he knew that he wasn't going to win. There was no way he could win the game with this hand of cards. And it was a really important game. There was a lot of money in it. So he thought, he's going he's gonna to cheat. And he was a master at sleight of hand. And he was able to cheat by switching this packet of cards. And what he did is he reached for a drink. And as he reached for a drink, he actually switched the cards in the packet. So that when he had to show people what his hand was, he ended up with a royal flush in spades. The ten, jack, queen, king, and ace of spades. And you'd think he would have won. But he actually got kicked out of the game. And he got sent to prison. Do you know why? Yeah. Because everybody realised that he cheated. Because he was a stupid gambler. And uh, when he threw the cards down on the table, he'd stupidly switched in cards from five different coloured packets. He'd switched in a card from a purple Man. pack, a green one, a black one, a red one. And that is why that world famous gambler got locked up in prison for a long time. That routine is called Stunner by... Um, no, I them in the cards. We'll get to that. This trick is called Stunner by Paul Gordon. Um, and me and Ryland sat down and we watched the download and I learnt it. Um, and I performed it for you. You didn't want to learn it, did you? And he's dying to tell you what he thinks of it. Go on, Ryland. Can you pass me the packet though so I can examine it? No, I cannot pass you the cards to examine. Well, that's a trick card then? Yes, and this is the argument that him and I have been having for the last few days since I learnt this trick. His issue... Well, tell everyone, what's your issue with this trick? You can't examine the cards. You can't examine the cards. Now, I agree, by the way. <laughs> I agree. But... And, and it, it, we were looking at this. I mean, it is... If you can examine the cards, this is a really good trick. Because if you think about it, you've obviously only got five cards... And they change, your hands are empty, and then you've got that extra moment of the batch change in colour. And what he turned around and said to me is he said, the trick is so good and so visual that people are going to want to examine the cards, aren't they? 
That's what you said. And when I and we were watching the uh, the download, it's only a seven minute download or a ten minute download. We were watching the download that came with it, and you were like, "But you can't examine the cards. You can't examine the cards. You think that's an issue? Why do you think that's an issue? Because they're gonna want to examine them, and then you're gonna be like." No, you can't examine them and you're going to be like, well, that's a trick card then. Yeah, exactly. And and that's my problem with it as well. Now, um, I, just, to, just, just to say, I think Paul Gordon is a great card magician. I think that he does some amazing card routines. I have three routines by Paul Gordon in my set. There's a video that he uses on his website of me performing, the, I think it's the corner of Piccadilly that I do all the time at weddings. It's a really good routine. I feel I need to say this to, uh, to, to you because the last time I reviewed a Paul Gordon trick and I said it wasn't very good, he absolutely blasted me on the internet and blocked me and then continued to went on Facebook and he went on everywhere saying, well, Craig Petty does this trick of mine and Craig Petty does this trick of mine and Craig Petty does this trick of mine. So my opinion doesn't count. Actually, my opinion does count count. Just because I like some of your routines and I don't like other routines doesn't mean, put your fingers in your ear, that I have to sit there licking your ass for every trick that you do. You're an amazing, I can bring your fingers out now. There are some amazing tricks that you do. There are some awesome tricks, but there, put your fingers in your ears as well. But there are some crap tricks and this is a crap trick. Okay, you can take your fingers out now. This is not a good trick. It's a good trick, but Paul, come on, you're a worker. Okay, or well you were, I, I, I found out recently that you retired. I didn't know that until someone told me because you blocked me on Facebook because I didn't get back to your message. But, you know, that's fine, no problem. But I found it out that you retired recently, but for a long time, you're a worker. You've released some amazing products. You've released some amazing tricks. You're telling me that you're going to do this in the real world and you're going to get, and you're going to, what are you going to do? When somebody says, can I examine them? Because people will say, I want to examine those cards. What are you going to do? Oh, I can't. Let me show you something else. This is not a worker's routine. This, and there's nothing wrong with a routine. I, I, I might put this on TikTok because I think this is a great TikTok trick. This is a great social media trick. But this is not a working routine, which is why the video then for it is a 50-second a, a video of a close-up of your hands on the close-up pad because this is not a worker's routine. If you want a good Paul Gordon trick, buy Corner of Piccadilly. Buy one of his books. He's got some amazing routines. This, put your fingers in your ears, is crap. It's crap for a worker. It's crap for a, um, for a, for a commercial worker. It's not very good at all. Take your fingers out. What do you think of it? Give me a percentage. One. One percent. I didn't, just, just to be clear, because I'm going to get ripped into by Paul Gordon, did I tell you to say that? No. Did I give you an opinion or is this your own opinion? Own opinion. He doesn't like it. He, as a seven-year-old, looked at it and he was like, well, nobody's going to want to, people are going to want to examine that. And they are. There's other ways that you could do this and have the cards examinable. I don't like it. I agree with him. One percent. Let's move on. Right. Review number four. You're, you're going to perform this one, aren't you, right? Yeah. We're going to need the camera a bit closer, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. So perform the trick for me, right? Go for it. Hi. Get the camera. She looks so happy about getting the camera as well. Look at the look at her happy smiley face, right? She had not got her She's delighted to be our camera lady, isn't she? <laughs> right, get on with the trick. She doesn't want to though. Daddy. I'll hold on to the case for you. Okay. Yep. Right, now. I've got a pack of I've got a pack of sixty cards. Well, let me have a look at them first. Okay. Wait, we've got a pack of oh, 60. over the map so people can see. So we've got a pack of 60 cards, we've got a load of random pictures, we've got a picture of a spade, we've got a picture of a five, we've got a picture of a zero, well... Calculator, a, yeah, really. calculator. We've got a picture of an umbrella, we've got a picture of a belt, we've got um, a picture of a bolt and screw, we've got a whole bunch of pictures. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Right, now... Right, so we've got a whole bunch of pictures, yeah? Yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah. Now, we're going to take, um, we're going to take cards like this. Okay. Like that, and you're just going to say stop, okay? Okay. So you can turn them over? Yeah, one by one, and you're just going to say stop. Okay. Anywhere I want? Yeah, literally anywhere. Okay, keep going. Oh, nice car. Keep going. Not done yet. Anywhere I want. 
Yeah. Okay, there. There? Mm hmm Okay. Right, mm -hmm. so you stop there. Let's have a look at the first face-down card. This one. Mm-hmm. Right. What was that card? Look at it. Um, it was a... What was it? Stop sign. <laughs> that was weird. You stopped on a stop. That was weird, yeah. Yeah. That weird. Now, think about it. You could... Right, so you could have stopped anywhere. Literally anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you could have stopped anywhere, yeah. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, put it face down wherever you want in the book. Anywhere I want? Literally anywhere, but it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. Face down? Yeah, face down. Okay, there. There? Yeah. Okay. Well, don't forget that this card is a stop card. Yeah, stop, stop sign, sign, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Let's see where you, where you put it. Okay. We're going to take the two cards above it and the two cards below it. Okay. okay. You've and made it disappear. I have made it. Ah, I just saw it. So we're going to take um, the cards above it and below it. The okay. Two ones. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Try to hold the rest of the deck for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So, now the weird thing is, you put it next to a slide. I like playing on slides. Yes, you do. This is true. Uh, we've got a table. Oh, I like playing on your phone. You do like playing on my phone, this is true. We've got, um, we've got, um, the, the handies on the side of the ships. I like swimming. You do like swimming, this is true. And we've got a sword. I like, I like playing Zelda. And on Zelda you get to collect swords. And you go like, yeah, to the go like, Okay, yeah, you do. Is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, did these mean anything to you? Uh, not really, no. What about this? Oh. <laughs> that's awesome <Wow>. right <laughs> that's wicked that is wicked right okay what do you think of this uh tell me what you think of it i like it i like it i like it this is basically just so you know what you get with this you get two decks of cards yep. uh it's from penguin magic uh it's by uh, dan harlan and somebody else whose name escapes me i'm really sorry steve rowe earlier on i said um um, who, who who did the uh, lolly hero trick with Steve Rowe? See, I told you, old people forget things. Um, so this is by Dan Harlan. This is by Dan Harlan and somebody else. Um, you get two decks of cards. Now the concept behind this: in the first deck, you've got a whole bunch of letters, haven't you? That's the letter deck, yeah. and and these cards are set up so yeah. that they look, look just like I'll show normal you cards. Huh? I'm going to find the number so I can show you. No, no, no. We're going to be quick. So these what cards. Yeah, these cards look so that would be look, a B, look, 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 that would look. be an L, that would be an O. Uh, I've that, the four, I figured out what the four is. It's an A. Uh, it could be, yeah. That's a U, that's, yeah, that's an M. You get the idea. Okay, look yeah. at the camera, it's not me. The, the, so the first deck is a whole bunch of letters, but you can't tell the letters. They look just like normal photos until you point out that they're letters. <laughs> Absolutely. The second deck has got other random cards in it. So it's got numbers, it's got ESP symbols, it's got a lot of standalone tricks in there. It's Wait, got uh, suits. Here. You put yeah, numbers in here. for a trick that I was doing, you put yeah. Ten numbers. Yeah. You put ten numbers in. That one here is now six. I love this. There's so many routines. The download's about three hours long and they go through so many oh, ideas. Oh, three know. hours? Well, don't worry. That's a ten minute one. Three hours is so longer than ten minutes. His attention pan is quite short. Um, so the routine that he did was the only routine he actually learned. Uh, but it was a really good routine. Uh, the stuff in there, I really like the concept of having a random deck of photos and have it. There's a really nice routine there by Dan where um, they mix up the cards face up, face down, and it's all very random. And they end up with five letters which spells out their name, and they can't really tell until he points it out. There's a serial number prediction from a. Uh, from a borrowed bill, which is really nice. He's got a multiple selection routine, which is really, really clever, where three people pick three photos and he finds them and the three photo, and the fourth person picks the car and then the th other three person's cards spell out car, which is really nice. There's a whole bunch, it's really clever and you can combine the two decks together. You watch the whole download, you can combine the two decks together and you can make one deck which fits your style. And what I've done, and the reason there's numbers in here, as Ryland correctly pointed out, is I've set this deck up for four different routines. 
Um, you said it was three? No, it's, it, well, it's three, but there's a bonus fourth if I want to use it. So I can put like a 10 minute routine together with this. That routine you showed is one of the routines and then I can go into another one, another one, another one. Now you really love Patrick Redford's photographic deck. Yeah. Where each card is like a playing card. And since the first review show that we did, uh, review episode number two, you actually learned that now, haven't you? Yeah. Um, completely. And he's got his own deck of that. What do you prefer? The photographic deck, and I'm not going to let you bail and say both. You're a reviewer. I want to know. What's better, this or the fa photographic deck by Redford? I prefer the photographic deck. Me too. Because I, I why do you prefer it? Uh, because it's a memoir they put made out photos. Yeah, and I, I'm actually using that. Um, I, I, I really like this. I think that the, the ideas that you can come up with is great. I'd like to actually take both of them to gigs and see which one gets a better if reaction. If, if, you make, if you're making me do percents on them, as in like the two of them, that, that if, if I'm saying the photographic deck, that would be 100 and that would be 99. Okay, so you're giving this 99 because you did give no. the photographic deck 100. Yeah, but... If if we have to do a if for the proper percent it'll be a hundred though. Oh, it's going to be a hundred. Yeah, of course. Like, it is. <laughs> not every single of them. <laughs> what are you giving? Um, I'm giving this uh nine no no yeah I'm giving this ninety five percent. I think this is amazing. I actually prefer Redford's photographic deck, but I think this is really really good. I think that uh, the reason I prefer photographic deck is because. It, uh, it's got applications for Memdeck users, and I'm a Memdeck user. However, if you don't use a Memdeck, I think this is better. If you didn't know Mnemonica, this would be a better deck. But you do know Mnemonica. Yes, as me my watch. You do know Mnemonica. I'm giving this 95%. I think it's brilliant. I think that work is out there. No. You. Stop trying. No, shut up. I'm giving it 95. Stop it. I'm trying to talk. Uh, it's getting 95%. I think the best trick with this deck is yet to be created. I think there's somebody out there that's gonna get this deck, somebody creative like Gary Jones, Chris Congreve, somebody like that, Steve Della, that's gonna get this and they're gonna go, wow, and this is gonna, you know, they're gonna come up with an amazing routine with this. I'm, I'm giving it 95%, I think this is awesome. I would suggest highly, no, 95. <laughs> I don't suggest getting it. Right guys, we're on to the final review. Now, um, this is Matt Baker trick. This is called the Misfit deck. Now, Matt Baker, you know who Matt Baker is? Yeah. He, he wrote the Boon and Fish to Shuffle Club. You performed his two-person act trick last week, Cash and You love Matt Baker, don't you? Yeah. This is a standalone trick by Matt Baker, and I haven't showed it you. I've kept it as a you surprise for the show. He's a massive, I know, he's a massive Matt Baker fan, and I haven't even shown him this, because I know he's going to love this. Right, we're going to do this. Now, it's, I, I want to tell you a story before I show you the trick, actually, right? When I was new into magic, there was a magician, and he showed me a trick, and he fooled the pants off me. What he did is he, he got me to pick a card and I had a free choice. It wasn't forced. He, he had me pick a card. I looked at it and he told me what the card was. And I was amazed until afterwards when I found out how it was done. And I realised... How realized, did you find out how it was done? I asked him. Every single card was the same card. He just used a one-way force deck. But he fooled me. I didn't expect it. Now, I'm going to show you something right now. And I promise you that I'm not using a trick deck of cards where every card is the same. I promise you that. And even if I was using a trick deck of cards where every card was the same, it wouldn't matter because I have a prediction that I'm putting right here on the table before we begin, okay? Yeah. Now, can we bring the camera a bit closer for me? 52 cards in a deck, right? Clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Ace through to king. 52 cards altogether. Name a card. Uh, the ten of clubs. Are you sure? Because I don't want you saying later on, I made you pick the Ten of Clubs. Yeah. If this had on the other side of it, the Ten of Clubs, would that be a good trick? Yeah. That'd be a good trick, wouldn't it? Yeah. Turn it over. It was the Ace of Hearts. I messed up. But don't worry about it, because I'm a professional. I can fix this. I want you to take that card and turn it face down. And then what I want you to do is just put it... Uh, well, well, actually, I'll do it for you. Look, I'm going to go back and forth like this. Where do you want it to... <laughs> there, you want it there. There. Where? Here? There? Yeah. In there? Are you sure? Yeah. Do you want to change your mind? Nope, 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 nope. Positive? Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to leave it in there. Now, have a look at this. You could have picked any card, right? Yeah. You picked the ten of clubs and you put it right there. Was that a free choice? Yep, 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 yep. You put it right next to that card, yes. didn't you? I'm and that was a free choice, I'm right? You're going to be freaked out. Do you know why? Why? Because you could have put it next to any card in that deck. Yeah. And you put it right next to that card. Yeah. 
What card is it? And the card right there is the Ten of Clubs. Oh. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking every other card in the deck is the same. Yeah. Well, every other card in the deck is the same. But the thing is, every other card in the deck is the Ace of Hearts. Wait, is that why you named the Ace of Hearts? Exactly. And you picked, you named the only card in the deck that's not an Ace of Hearts. And you put the prediction right next to it. Boom! You're fooled! You're fooled! You're, you, you, he, he never gets fooled these days. I show him a trick and he's like, I, I know how it's not, it's a double lift. I know how it's not, it's a double lift. <laughs> You're fooled, Matt Baker, <laughs> help me fool you. You were fooled, you no, were fooled. Go on, how's it work? Uh, you, uh, you did a quill in there? Yeah, there was a curl, but how does that make any difference? Genuinely, it's not, d d they are, it's not double faces clubs. or anything. You but you still pick the only ten of clubs in a deck of ace of clubs. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, well you... Makes no difference. Yes, I called it. It doesn't matter. Today. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I called the card. How did you name the only card in the pack that wasn't an ace of heart? <laughs> you suck. Thank you, Matt Baker, for helping me fool my over-smug seven-year-old kid magician. I absolutely love this. I think this is, right now I'm telling you, this is 100%. Give it 100%. This is amazing. Did I'm not. You say it's 100%. It's 100%. This You're is amazing. Lady. I love this trick. This is probably the best trick deck I have ever seen. This takes the this takes the invisible deck and it drop kicks it into a different century. It's it. Look at it. It's so clear. I love. The whole story behind it. I love the prediction. I love the magician in trouble thing. I love the fact that they get this right next to their card. This can be a business card that you can give out. Yeah, but what, um, happened, what happened? It's if, an immediate reset, by the way. What happens if I just? What happens if I said the Ace of Hearts? Well, you'll never know because you didn't. And if you name the Ace of Hearts, he covers that. It's a half an hour download where he covers absolutely everything. It's amazing. It's really good. And if you name the Ace of Hearts, you've got a miracle. Um, yeah, because all the cards of the Ace of Hearts, you can just show, but all of the cards of Ace of Hearts. Well, he Hearts. actually goes even better. If, the, if you name the Ace of Hearts, he goes, okay, Ace of Hearts, no problem. And can you name a card? And they name a card. And they put the, the prediction right next to the card they name. And you go, what was your card? Ace of Hearts. Every other card in the back is the Ace of Hearts. It's even yeah. better. It's an immediate reset. It's very easy to do. As he pointed out, there is a cull. That is the only move in there. But Matt talks about three different ways of doing this. And one of the ways is just self-working. There's no cull required. You can use a version of the crosscut force to be able to do the same thing. Um, it's very easy. The, the instructions are really well. I mean, Matt Baker's an amazing uh, presenter of magic anyway. Uh, an amazing teacher. You'd think you'd be an amazing teacher because he's a teacher. And he is. He's an amazing teacher. Um, instant reset. And by the way, you don't need a table. I know I spread them out on the table. You can do it in your hands. So it's perfect for walk yeah, around. Where would you put the prediction? Huh? Where would you put the prediction? You could just put it on somebody's hand or you could put it on top of a glass or you could put it sticking out your top pocket or something. And the other thing is, from a socially distanced point of view, people don't need to touch the deck if they don't want to. You can do what I did and you can say, look, I'll put it down there. Where do you want to set? And you can put it in yourself. This, for me, is the perfect trick. Instant reset. Anytime, anywhere. I absolutely love it. Now, the, the problem with it is this deck can't be examined. But it doesn't look like, like it looks very unsuspicious. Why can't it be examined? I'll tell you later. I'm not going to expose it on the show. But it, it looks like you could examine it, doesn't it? You weren't, you did, when I showed you Paul Gordon's stunner, you were like straight away, well, okay, it can't be examined. But with this, you didn't even think that you didn't want to examine it, did you? And Matt talks about this. The way it's presented, and look at how clean it looks. They don't want to examine it. But with, when you do something amazing with five cards and all the backs change and this changes and that changes, people will be like, oh, let me have a look at that. With this, that's not the case. And, you know, you do this and you can be very clean with it and people aren't going to want to examine it. They're just not going to want to examine this trick. Is it because they've seen it? Yeah, yeah. Really and it's a closer. I'd say you close this. You'd maybe do something with another Phoenix deck, and then you bring this in, and you'd bring it in as a finale. I love it. I love this. What I love it. That's the down downside. It can't be examined. But really, I don't think it matters. I don't think what it matters. I've told you. I'm giving it a hundred percent. This is going you. straight in my act. I absolutely love this. And you're not getting your grubby little mitts on it. I'm not letting you have this. It's mine. Keep off. Get off. Get off. Put it over there. Back off, or I'll send you to bed. Mm. Right, what do you give it? 
It's 100%. Yeah. It's amazing. It's such a good trick. Guys, I highly recommend you get it. It's brilliant. Matt Baker is a living legend. Get off my misfit deck. <laughs> right, that's it. Guys, thanks very much for watching. That's another show. Um, please, will you get off my misfit deck? Put it over there. <laughs> Make sure that you follow the Slightly Unusual channel on YouTube. We put videos up every single day. We do the review show. We do vlogs. We do a different trick goes live at five o'clock every single day. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Slightly Unusual YouTube channel. Last week, we talked about your YouTube channel, The Kid Magician, and uh, you had 43 subscribers, I think. He's now on 103, 104, something like that. You've hit the 100 mark. See what you can get for next week. So if you want to follow him, Five. don't know why you'd want to, but if you want to follow him, just look on YouTube for The Kid Magician. <laughs> the Kid Magician. You have to follow me. The Kid Magician, who's not going to get my Misfit deck. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs> I'm Craig. This is Ryland. Come over here and say bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Five o'clock on a Wednesday.